Hello, how's everyone doing? Uh, I just gotta talk about this. I gotta talk about this. <laughs> Otherwise I'm gonna, gonna be tormented in my own skull thinking about it forever. And uh, <laughs> flat earth, flat earth. The perception that I have of it which is of course very personal is that nobody wants to talk about it very much at least not anybody that I know personally uh, and that's the one thing is nobody really wants to talk about it and the number two thing is that It always seems to be linked up with the Bible somehow. Uh, Christians have some sort of ties to, to flat earth. The firmament and so on. I would have to say, in my personal opinion, Talking about flat earth versus globe earth is kind of silly just to start with because it, you're, you're talking about ideas and ideas just are never ending, you know? They're, they <laughs> catch some wind and just, you know, they're just gone. Um... I, I would say the, the the flat earth, the physical data that people are presenting, the flat earth people <sighs> seem to be less um, the flat earth people seem to be less identified with their theory than the globe earth people. And I think this may be because globe earth has been the accepted scientific cosmological model for all of us for a long time. And most of us grew up, well, I don't know if any of us remember being brought up as flat earthers, you know? So just off the bat, you're challenging that norm, that social norm, which, uh, you know, the Globers, the Globe people would have more to lose, I think. Because it's, it's a more ingrained, more identified with mental model of the, this place that we're in. Um, but like some other people have said in their videos, uh, I don't personally think Flat Earth is so much about the physical structure of the the planet or the plane simply because it doesn't really matter unless you're gonna do something aside from just talk about it and I'm not professing that I am doing that I'm not I'm certainly not doing anything besides just talking about it but it's more of a uh, it's a way for when when you get interested in some flat earth thing the reason the reason I like it personally is because it's just something new you know it's something different the, this place is very robotic including all the people most of the people it's very robotic it's machinery you know and and at, at a certain level we ourselves and our bodies are machineries the only part that really isn't machinery is the, the consciousness itself, the, the, the being part of you. That part seems to have a life of its own, you know, that's your mind is wandering and you're wandering, you know. I've always just wandered. I'm wandering right now. <laughs> I'm just roving like I've been doing the past month. I'm just driving around. 
not even so much because I want to figure out what to do with my life, etc., but just because <laughs> being at home with dad and my brother with their routines is just like a, <laughs> it's driving me fucking insane. Um, you know, it's just driving me insane a little bit. And I love them, but, uh, yeah. Another thing I wanted to talk about from purely a personal perspective is perspective. You guys have probably heard of, um, what's the word? Archetypes? Archetypes, right? You have a horse, real life horse in front of you and you're petting it, that's not an archetype. But there is a, according to this, there is an archetype of a horse which is not the actual individual horse. There's, you know, this archetype can only exist in the mind, not, doesn't exist in manifestation. So, what I notice, uh, an archetypal horse, I'm assuming, doesn't have size attached to it. It's a universal model for horse and then all the individuality comes in the manifestations of it. Something I wanted to talk about was that everyone likes to everyone likes to use measurements of things. And the reason I'm mentioning this along with the idea of archetypes is that uh When we're measuring something, when we're talking about an object's size, we pretend that there is an archetypal version of that object. You know what I'm saying? There isn't an archetypal version of that object, object aside from in our minds. Um... Size is 100% relative. This is, this is the reason why uh, the idea of us being in a simulation or, or in a computer program makes more sense than this being reality. Because... And I can't explain exactly why that makes sense to me, but I can try to describe a little bit in how objects grow and diminish in size depending on where you're at. You see, all of the object size, every single object that you see with your, with your eyeballs, right? It doesn't have a size. It has a relative size, right? Relative to what? Relative to you. <laughs> you are the determinant. You're the determinant of that object size. You, where you are, determines that object size. Nothing else. The the, I guess globe Earth model of objects is that they have a size. Period. Uh, separate from the consciousness or the witness of the thing itself. <laughs> And uh, this, it has, they have a, a separate size sort of to them. But if you just walk around on the plant, you know, the planet or the plane, uh, you will notice that <laughs> all of the objects have size, but they only have size relative to your exact position. So for instance, if you're, like I'm sitting on a street right now, Cars are coming and going. And to my eyes, they are tiny. Well, they come from nothing to me. Off in the horizon, everything melts together into too small for me to distinguish. But as these cars approach, they get larger and larger. And then as they go away, 
These are just words to describe what we're uh, appearing to see. As they get further and further away, they get smaller, right? So the objects are changing size as they move. And the same thing with our hands. Just your hand is small as it's far away from you, you bring it to your face, and to you, your hand is now massive, right? It's covering, it can cover your entire field of vision. So to me, anything that's in this arena, okay, I'm not saying that there aren't other universes or there, there isn't any other possibilities, but in this particular way of perceiving things, object size is 100% relative to your specific position. You, the witness, are the determinant of the object size. And once the object gets big enough, you could use you could use that kind of language. When the object is big enough to you, you can touch it. Right? When the object is big enough to you, you can touch it. Or, in other words, in normal language, when the thing is close to you, when it's right next to you. So that's just a little bit of my personal perspective on perspective. Relativism just is what it's what this place is. It's, it's everything is is relative to your position, you know. If you use your imagination and you imagine the Earth as a whole, it gets a little strange from that point because objects can. There's no uniformity in objects. <laughs> there's no, there, there's no absolute, there's no archetypal object. It's all in re, in in re, in relation to your exact position. You, the witness. Maybe that's why I've been just driving around. Just I'm just watching. You know, my world, right? Is completely determined on where I'm located. And you know, like, what happens when something... Everything does this. Just just watch it yourself. Everything disappears off into the horizon, depending on if you're moving towards it or moving away from it. If you're moving toward an object, it's getting bigger to you. If you're moving away from an object, it's getting smaller to you. And this, everything that we know, including the humans, inc are included in this. If, if you and your, your dad are running and you stop, your dad's going to start shrinking. And eventually, if you wait long enough and watch him long enough, he's going to disappear into the horizon. And that's that, you know? You know how to get him back. <laughs> you know exactly how to get him back. We all know how to get the people back when they disappear off into the horizon. Um, so, I think the main problem that I have with contemporary science and contemporary people as a whole is that they they keep talking about the world as if it's like an objective thing and the Christians don't like relativism but relativism is the fact of this place everything is relative to you everything to me its size is determined by your location. <laughs> I'm not sure exactly what you can do with this information aside from maybe <laughs> maybe it will joggle things up in your mind a little bit and I don't know, maybe it will shove you off the deep end into a bit of insanity. Hopefully that doesn't happen, but we all have our belief structures challenged at some point. Uh, my belief structure right now is not challenged. I, I, I don't my only issue right now is money and working with and against my resentment toward money. So I have on one hand a desire for a community where we actually need each other, not just in a, a pseudo way, which I don't know if is possible here and now, but maybe it is, versus money, which separates people and things. And 
takes life experiences and changes them into numbers. You know, that's what money does. <laughs> it, it takes life experience and it, change, it converts it into numbers so you can be written down. I don't like it. I don't like that. It, it strikes me wrong. So that's the bit of a quandary that I'm in is dealing with that money to me is like a, it's like, yuck. you know, it's like, it's like getting my fingers covered in some sticky stuff that I want to get off, but I can't get it off. You know, <laughs> that's what, that's what money is for me right now. So I'm spending my days kind of wandering, watching, I'm watching a lot of YouTube videos because I can, I can find people that, that relate to my general state of mind. And you know, that's my, that's my community in a sense, but in a sense, they're also very separate from me and they're far away from me. So the community is there, but you're not talking with them on a daily basis, you know? Our, our society has successfully fragmented us to where we don't really need each other anymore. You know, you, you go and you perform your appointed task and exchange it for fiat currency, which, you know, we all know what, what money is. I don't want to go into that right now, but you're exchanging it for, for money. Uh, and you don't need the people anymore, you know? The people are serving the money, not vice versa. A very obvious example of this is, is the insurance industry, where the insurance industry itself is doing nothing as far as actual work. And when I say actual work, I mean not just taking records and moving money numbers around. To me, if their insurance companies are there, you know, according to them, they're they're there. So, you know, you'll be able to fix your car if it breaks down. And if you just look at you and your car breaking down as an isolated incident, without having the money and all the extra compartmentalized jobs that it creates, you have a car. The car gets in an accident, and the car needs to be fixed. I'm, I'm saying this without money being in the equation. Car breaks, car needs to be fixed. Where do you bring your car? Do you bring it to your insurance agent and ask him to fix it? No, you bring it to your mechanic and your mechanic knows how to fix it and they have the parts. So the insurance companies are acting as this giant middleman, which effectively does nothing. They they shuffle numbers around on their computer, they shuffle names around on their computer, and they have a lot of people <laughs> spending all this time and effort shuffling numbers and names around, but they're not actually doing anything. Um, it's There's a car, there's an accident, and the thing needs to be fixed. So the only parts that really need to be involved in that is you, whoever's running the car, the mechanic, and the parts that are involved to fix it. This is my personal ideas on these things that, you know, I'm not saying they're perfect. It, it just, the, the way that people spend their times, the way that people spend their time here is just mind boggling to me. And, and, uh, I'm not robotic like that. I can't be that robotic. I've tried it. I've tried getting into routines and I just can't do it. I always end up wandering, you know? <laughs> So, you know, <laughs> I'm looking for playmates. I'm looking for my people wherever they are. I wish I lived with my people, you know, and we just didn't view ourselves as slaves and we viewed ourselves as creators in this little playground that we're in. And, uh, you know, we played and worked together. That's what I want. And I'll probably find it eventually. So I'm not too worried about that, but uh, I'm, I'm in, a, in a bit of a, a holding pattern right now. But uh, anyway, this has been quite long. And like with everything that I talk about, I don't hold on to any of it. So I didn't have a plan starting off with this. I don't have much memory of what I talked about, and I don't really care either. Maybe I should, I don't know. 
Fisher passed baggage, right? <laughs> uh, Twenty minutes. So flat Earth, globe Earth, globe Earth, and flat Earth exist only in your head. The only place you can truly know is the exact spot that you're in, and even then, you don't know that, and everything is relative depending on its exact position relative to you. And that's that. You can go conduct that experiment for yourself. You know, we all, as little kids, we like held our finger up to the moon and, you know, because of the laws of this place that we're in, we can't smush the moon with our fingers, you know. But there's probably a place where you can do that. It's not happening here because it's too chaotic for us and uh, we would die as our little ego-bound selves because that's too powerful and we would die immediately, so... <laughs> So sometimes I say thank you, God, universe, whatever you are, for limiting my, my ability to move things here because I would probably destroy everything in a flash like that. <laughs> so yeah. Um, but I do, have the, I do have the ability to uh, create and weave vast universes and other worlds in my mind. It's just that mine aren't particularly routine and uh, they involve frustration and angst because everyone else seems to be robotic routine oriented and that might just also be a cop out because I don't want to extend out and talk with people but who knows whatever it is now will certainly change in a couple minutes and that will be different from what happens in uh, 10 minutes after that so that's my flat earth ramble um, I just like the flat earth people more. I don't know why. I guess it's be, that's the rebel in me. It's just funny, you know, the the fact that people, according to our history, were killing each other over this, these universe models and just astounding to me. Anyway, thank you for watching if you watched this whole thing. 23 minutes is a long time. And uh, yeah, I'm going to cut off now. So take care, everyone. Uh, good night, good morning, wherever you're at on the flat plane or the globe or wherever, off in some fantasy land, wherever you are, and I'll, I will see you in the next one. Bye.